every child deserves a loving home. Uh, I think that's a something that they deserve. It's a right they should have. I always look at the numbers. 14,000 children that need a home, that deserve a home. And, yeah. and if we're able to do it and provide that for them, how can we not? It kind of just woke me up and like took me out of that whole drunken drug life, I mean, even gang life. I was saved just in time to turn it around. It's what they've done for us. You know, they have filled not only the void that we had, but um, just have enriched our lives so much. I can't thank the Child Crisis Center and AFC enough because they were there for us every step of the way, and they are now. We've been married for 27 years, um, and about nine years ago, we decided it had been put on our hearts to foster. I'm like, we could do that, we could do this. Our first placement was a beautiful little girl. Susan was um, just a very sweet girl, very compliant, really pretty easy. Um, and she um, left our home and was adopted by another family. After she left, boy, that was hard. And we all just were real quiet for a few days. And But her and our daughter, Helen, so they're 14 and 16 now, and they're still friends. We go in and we meet Margaret, who is just this skinny little teeny pixie of a girl, cute as can be. And um, we play with her for a, a you know a little while, and um, we leave, and she is screaming her head off, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. She's been the most difficult child we've ever had. Right, right. The first six years of her life, if I may say, were a living hell. And she was a difficult kid, really difficult. And then, you know, mm -hmm. she's the one we adopted. So. <laughs> They've experienced things that nobody should have to experience, and it's not of their own doing. They're the victims. I think fostering has been like the most challenging thing we've ever done other than being married <laughs> for as long as we have. Um, but it's also the most rewarding thing too when you see a child kind of turn the corner. Making sure that they know that they have worth. They are worth something. They're special, they're precious, and don't let anybody take that from you. The driven part of me is definitely from um, just being in that scenario as a kid, being, you know, homeless and being, uh, not having, you know, a secure family. You know, my dad was an alcoholic, mom was a drug addict. I mean, I slept in front of a thrift store, I can't even tell you how many times on a bench with my head on my dad's lap and he would throw his jacket over me and like, that was our, like where we stayed for the night. And I hadn't eaten for two days. I still remember the last time I actually saw my dad was at the crisis center. I remember he dropped me off and I was sad because he was leaving, but I was still comforted knowing that he told me he was coming back. You know, just that memory of that last time I saw him. Because shortly after that, when I moved out of the crisis center, he passed away from a, uh, the whole drunken debacle. I still in my heart thought one day me and him would be able to you know hang out or i i knew that like i wasn't gonna be able to live with him but i knew that maybe i could see him again and say hi and but i was lucky enough to have family members who were already um foster parents i call my aunt my mom she is definitely my mom she's been more of a mother than anybody so that she's definitely earned that title of my mom you know like life isn't about living on the streets and you know being immersed in drugs and alcohol and abuse. It's about, you know, living and just a happy family. It's like, but the crisis center pulled me out of there and showed me like a different side of life. I hate to like make the crisis center out to be like a center, you know what I mean? Just because it was such a home. I just remember all the people there, all like the loving, caring people, like everyone there cared about you. like. You never thought, no, no one there was like treated you like you were just some kid and this was their job. Like, they all loved working there, you know? And I still, I still remember all of them. My past, I will never use it as a crutch, you know? Like, I will never make myself th think that I can't just because, you know, my parents failed. I want 
nothing more than to just be successful in life. I don't ever want to be in that situation that my parents put me in. I just want that old school lifestyle, you know? Live the American dream, you know? <laughs> We decided that we needed to, to work with the children that are in our own state um, through the system and let's just adopt and so these kids don't need to be disrupted any longer. So we did our research with um, through different agencies and we came across um, the agency affiliated with Child Crisis Center and uh, we were just, after we met them, we knew uh, they made it feel like home <laughs> to us and we knew we weren't going to go anywhere else and this is after interviewing about three or four others. I have two that we adopted in 2011 and I have two um, that we're currently fostering that we took in on June 10th. Uh, sibling boys that uh, it, we plan to adopt if it goes to that. I hear all the time, my husband and I, what a wonderful thing we did for these kids. And it's not how we feel at all. We feel that, you know, we were <laughs> there, there for us. They truly have changed our lives for the better. And we just wouldn't have wanted it any other way. <laughs> it feels amazing when um, the adoption goes through. They definitely wanted to change their last name to be the same last name as us. And I said, yeah, I said, um, what are you thinking of for middle names? We can certainly do that. And my oldest, uh, Naya, said, well, mom, if you were able to have your own ki biological kids, what would you name her if it was a girl? And we told her, and she said that's what she wanted for her middle name. I have a picture of my daughter, the youngest daughter, turning around looking up at me when the judge Sorry, <laughs> when the judge um, read out her new name and she's just got this smile on her face and I just melted. She was so excited to hear her last name to be with us. She says it all the time. She'll say, you know, I have a biological mom, but you're my real mom. And because we were chosen for you and she'll say, because I'm just like daddy, you know, A, B and C. And, you know, Kayla's just like you, mom. And, um... And it's, it's just amazing. You know from the moment those kids are with you that they were supposed to be there. We will just continue as long as we can and help as many kids as we can.